coming up. Have you seen the groups option in Office 365? Well, today we take a look at Office 365 groups, a new self-service capability to accelerate team collaboration. From collaboration experiences in mail, calendar, files, and tasks, to integration with other Microsoft Cloud services like Power BI and Dynamic CRM. And if you're in IT or are a developer, keep watching to see the new management controls, reporting, and extensibility options. So I'm joined by Christoph from the Office 365 team. So we've had Office 365 groups for a while now, but what's new? So think of group as an easy way to get started with your team, whether you're working on an event, a project, or just uh, you're being promoted as a manager and you want to start uh, communicating with your team. Okay. And here what you're looking at is um, Outlook on the web. And I can easily create a group uh, by hitting a plus sign. And I'm just going to type a project name and just hit create. And I can add you, Jeremy, automatically press add. And in second, as you've seen, what is done, it's, it's created a, an entry in Azure Active Directory. And from there on, that team has a number of uh, ways to collaborate. Obviously, it's got an inbox to discuss things. It's got a shared calendars. It's got a shared set of files and a shared notebooks to start ideations or taking notes. So it's much easier to spin up one of these groups than it would have been, say, to create a distribution list or other things like we had in the past. Correct. One of the big value that customers really enjoy is this notion of self-service that anyone can create those, uh, those teams, those projects, okay. and, and get going. Now, instead of continuing here, we just created it. It doesn't have a lot of data. Let's transition to an existing uh, project that we're working on. And in this case, we're launching a new product. Right. And you can see here, uh, it's got some existing discussions uh, that the team had. For instance, here, you know, I've shared a great uh, YouTube channel. And you see, I also have gestures, social gestures, to approve and acknowledge some of the great work the team is doing. Okay. The other thing that uh, really helps with uh, collaboration is this notion of a shared calendar. Right. And you can see here, in blue is my work calendar at Contoso. And in red are specific events with respect to that team. And for instance, today, later on today, we've got an opportunity review looking at some of the data that we're looking at for the market opportunity for this new uh, product. And I want to make sure I don't miss this opportunity. So I can easily add this specific instance to my work calendar so that then it's on my favorite mobile device and I've got no excuse to miss that specific thing. Okay. So you see it took a couple seconds and it's part of my uh, calendar. Right. Now the other thing that, uh, again, here we're working on a project that uh, Groups gives us is the ability to manage tasks. And you can see here, Planner is something we've just started rolling out uh, to first release customers. Mm -hmm. And you can see here, I've got a dashboard of different projects I'm working on. If we double click back to that, that project we're working on, the, the product launch, you can see there's already a very visual representation of, of work that needs to get done. And you can see I've got different tasks. And another way to look at it is this particular uh, chart view. And for instance, in this view, I can easily see tasks that have been assigned. And for instance, here there's a video that needs to be produced. And I think I know the right guy to help with that. So I'm just going to assign that to you, Jeremy. I might be able to help you there. And, and voila. So we've assigned a task to, uh, to you, Jeremy. One more thing I want to do is I want the team to review um, a document by noon today, which is our product strategy. Okay. And here, you know, I'm typing a message. And uh, you can see here, I can automatically uh, point to the existing uh, file repository. Here, I'm picking the product strategy that we've been working on. And I'm going to attach that as a OneDrive attachment so that, again, there's only one source of truth. And, and team members don't have to mess with different versions as attachments. So I'm just going to do that. Now, the next thing, again, that we know happens typically when we collaborate is we might need a quick call to uh, discuss some specific things about the projects. And again, because Groups is an object in Active Directory, here I'm transitioning to, for instance, uh, Outlook 2016, which is also integrated with Groups. You can see that I can over the definition of a group, and I can have a quick call okay. with the team, which is what I just initiated. Because it's in Skype, it'll work across multiple devices, like we've got here on our phone. And there we are. We've got now a group conversation going. We've got at least the two of us currently on the phone, but also the other two participants have been dialed as well. 
So yeah, correct. Automatically, it's going to see who's available. So here, uh, you know, you're on the call. You were able to make it. One thing I want to do for the for the team members that are in there, and just to make sure we uh, we document our decisions, I can easily uh, initiate a um, a note. And so I'm just going to pick an existing the existing notebook we've been using uh, for our team, and and voila, it's going to record the attendees, and we can easily uh, take notes on on the actions that we've agreed on. So beyond all of this, we're doing also a lot in terms of being able to collaborate on documents together, right? Now, obviously, you're not always in front of a beautiful uh, Surface book. Right. So let's uh, show you the experience on the go. OK, let's take a look. So here on my phone, I'm just going to launch the uh, Allo Groups app. OK. And um, right here, you know, it's got the same uh, group that I was a part of that we were having a discussion. You can see it's got the request of me asking the team members to review by noon. It looks like you liked it already, so it looks like you're on top of it. Right. And I'm just going to review the changes that the team members have been making. So I'm just going to click on Files, click on the uh, Product Strategy Word document. And you can see here it's just going to open that document on my phone, download, downloading the uh, latest and greatest version with the latest changes. And I'm just going to go in Edit Mode because I also want to make some changes. And you can easily see here that um, you know, you're yourself as well as editing the documents. So this is as real time as it gets. To right, got it uh, open here on my PC. Great integration with uh, with SharePoint and OneDrive, even though it's an Outlook groups app. It looks like some of the uh, changes have been made. I can easily go back to the discussions uh, that we're having with the team. Um, I can see that you've uh, made your edits, and that's great. And since uh, this is an important milestone, I also want to notify uh, another team that's dependent on this which is the marketing team. So you can see I can easily add mention another team and, and post a message. So great. And you're, you're speaking also to the integration across getting to other teams. And one of the other things that we've done with the technology is actually build it into other Microsoft cloud services. So we had Michael Teodor on an earlier show showing Power BI integration, but it's also working in CRM. Why don't you tell us about that? Yes. Again, the idea is you know, it's great to uh, work on a beautiful dashboard or work on the sales opportunity if you're in Dynamics. Mm -hmm. By the end of the day, you're probably going to have to reach out to folks outside of, let's say, your data scientist competency or your, your role as a seller. And that's what we've done with the uh, Power BI team, where here you get a, a dashboard again for this project where we're looking at, at data on the opportunity analysis for this specific uh, product launch. But again, we also want to have discussions and collaborate with the team on specific data points that we're looking here. And for instance, you can see here that that product launch is the same group that we're using earlier with Planner or just to have a discussion. Yep. And you can see I got all the dashboard reports and data set. And for instance, in this case, maybe that opportunity analysis, um, I want to add maybe um, someone from, uh, from our finance team to uh, this specific project. And in this case, I'm just going to add, let's add Alex uh, from our finance team. And you can see automatically it discover Alex and, and voila. So suddenly Alex is a full-time member of this group. And, you know, he can uh, help and, and be part of the data scrubs and the, and the daily call that we have maybe regarding the data sets. And beyond the integration with Power BI, something brand new is the ability to connect with external sources of information straight from within your groups. With the Office 365 Connectors uh, developer preview that we've announced recently, you can indeed uh, bring in information from uh, third-party apps. Okay. And you can see here, I'm just going to, you got a new menu with this developer preview. And in this case, we've already configured uh, the Bing um, connector. And what this does is on a daily basis, it's going to curate content um, that's discussed based on specific keywords. So you can see here, for instance, last night, you know, the project we're launching is about solar panels, and we want to stay on top of what's going on out there. And you can see here I've got curated articles uh, that came from Bing, and you can see our colleague, Anne, um, started uh, recommending reading some of those articles. Very useful for tracking sentiment, especially. But beyond all this, when I think about it from an IT perspective, and that's kind of where my heart's at, what happens then at the back end when we've got all these groups being created in Azure AD? Are there controls to manage that? Yes. We've made a number of investments during the past years. You got to remember that, yes, groups are stored and managed in Azure, but the workloads that it uses are things like Exchange Online and SharePoint Online, to name a few, mm -hmm. uh, in our backend Office 365. And because of that, you know, there's a number of administration uh, capabilities that are natively offered, things like e-discovery, litigation hold, naming policies, and you can even control 
uh, groups using uh, PowerShell command line. So a lot of those controls are inherited from Office 365 from an information protection standpoint, but since the groups are actually stored in Azure AD, are there controls that we can do to manage or audit what's going on in Azure AD? Let's show you two recent innovations, dynamic membership and audit report. Okay. I've got the list of all the groups in, um, in Azure, and for instance, a specific group uh, is called a marketing team. Now, Maybe the marketing team is made up of uh, hundreds or thousands of employees in, in my large organizations. And instead of manually adding or removing members as folks join that organization, I can easily configure dynamic membership. And you can see here I've got a tab, and I've set it, set it to yes. And you can see here I'm doing a query based on an attribute that I've got in uh, my directory around department containing the word marketing. So this means that it's going to automatically add people who have that attribute of marketing into this larger group, and as they leave marketing, conversely, it will remove them from that group, right? Absolutely. You don't have to worry about doing that manually. So that's going to save a ton of time in terms of maintaining those groups, but we've also done a lot from a reporting perspective. Indeed. So here I'm in the uh, reporting section in Azure, and you can see I'm going to scroll down to the audit report. And what this does is it gives me all the activities that are happening around groups. Mm -hmm. And for instance, every time a group is created, everyone, a group is deleted, everyone, someone added a member to a group, everyone changed the name of a group. So again, it enables you as the administrators to always know everything that's going on with respect to groups in your organization. This will really help people monitor all the activities going on from an Azure AD perspective. But I know we announced quite a few different other controls in December. Why don't you tell us about those? Uh, the first one is hidden membership. It's been a top ask for a lot of customers where, again, it will give you the ability uh, to obfuscate uh, the list of members that are a member of a group. Second one is group expiry so that, you know, the groups that aren't being used that maybe a hot up team created, uh, no one is using anymore. It will give you the ability to expire that group and recover the content stored across Exchange and SharePoint, for instance. And the last one that you all been asking is a hybrid guidance for all the users that still have mailboxes on-prem. So we're going to be publishing uh, documentation on how you use Azure Active Directory Connect to support that scenario. And I know for all the developers out there, you're probably wondering, can I do some of those integrations that we saw like in Power BI or in CRM for my own line of business apps? Are we also providing those extensibility options? Yes, we've announced last November the release of the uh, Microsoft Graph. And the Microsoft Graph pretty helps you uh, interact with the different API endpoints with the Microsoft Cloud. And as you can see here, we do have fully supported uh, REST API to either create groups, update groups, or just uh, inject conversations from, let's say, uh, line of business apps, similar to what our partner teams at Microsoft have done, such as the Power BI team or the Dynamics team to integrate with groups. So lots of great new capabilities, but where is this all going? We think groups is a key part of collaborations in the future and a great alternative to, let's say, distribution groups. Right. There's a number of innovations that are coming. And for instance, the first one is we're going to deliver guest access. So folks that are outside of your active directory can be a full team member and, and engage and collaborate across all those modalities that I've showed you. Other things we're going to be doing is deeper SharePoint integration. We're also going to integrate with Delft. And last but not least, yes, Yammer will integrate with Office 365 groups. Welcome news for a lot of people. So where would I get started if I wanted to start using groups right now? Well, again, groups are available in your favorite tenant today, so I highly encourage you to start leveraging it to collaborate on projects. So if you haven't started already, start using groups and keep checking back to the Office blog and Microsoft Mechanics. Thanks for watching.